Okay, so um, I'm actually going to break this up into, I think, two 20-minute uh, videos. And what I want to do here is um, we're going to do some validation of our model. We had done this in class. We're going to do it, make it a little bit simpler. Um, so um, one other thing that I wanted to point out, you can see the, uh, the way that these are generated. I couldn't leave this alone. It was driving me crazy that they were all caps. I made it just a minor change to the way that these get generated. What I did was we're generating these characters and I were looping over this based on the size of these words and I said if I was equal to zero we're just going to use the uppercase character otherwise we make it lower. And the other thing that I did is with the email address I just put an underscore in between the first name and the last name. So I think it just makes the makes it a little, little bit more realistic, makes it a little bit, little bit easier to, to use. So what I'm going to start out doing, and uh, we've done this before, was to put some validation on our, uh, on our model. So one of the things you could do here, now if you start typing this in, you'll see that it's not going to recognize it. What, what we're actually doing is putting an attribute. And we, we could create our own attributes as well, but I'm going to use an existing attribute, which is a required attribute. Now, if you don't see it show up here, you do control dot, it'll tell you that it recognizes it's in the system component model data annotations uh, DLL. Okay? And one of the other things that we'll do, I, I realize we really haven't done it at this point, it, it, at some point we'll take a look at all these references, which are uh, all the DLLs that, uh, that we're using. All these DLLs, we're, they're not in our bin directory for application, but they're actually, when the .NET framework is installed, there's some, something called the uh, global uh, assembly cache, and, and they're, they're created there. Um, when you end up installing, they get installed there. So um, you could probably even see system, let's see if we could find that one. Yeah, system component model data annotation. There wasn't anything we had to do that, that uh, when you end up creating your MVC3 project, that automatically is there. So I just wanted to point that out if you guys open that up. Um, we're going to make the last name required as well. Okay. And we're going to make the email required, but we're going to have two other issues we're going to need to deal with with the email. One of them is that we're going to want to make sure that the email is in the right format. The other thing is we're going to make the email unique. Um, and it, instead of actually uh, making the email unique here, which we did in class, which was a little bit confusing. We're actually going to do that right in our controller. Um, we're going to do just a little, little um, custom validation in order to do that. Now, what I'm going to do here, I have like to look this up. And in fact, I, I looked this up on, uh, on Stack Overflow um, to get a, 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 a regular expression for validating email address. You could write a very simple regular, regular expression for validating email addresses, but um, they're not going to be, they're not going to be that strong. And I looked this up on Stack Overflow. Basically, the way that this works is that you put in a regular expression. And if the uh, item that you have doesn't match your regular expression, it'll throw an exception. So let me actually copy what I have here. This actually is going to be two parts here. OK. So the regular expression, let me get rid of these line breaks. Okay, so this is the regular expression. The only thing that, that the add symbol does is that it's, um, instead of the, the backslashes escaping out characters, which wouldn't be valid, the add symbol says, um, you know, just use this as a, as a string. If not, I, I think you end up getting an error if you take that out. Yeah, because it's used to slash, and it's, you know, basically saying it's not, a, not valid here. The other thing that we're going to do here is we're going to put an error message in. So our error message is going to be All right, one, one thing that I'll do is I'll, I'll make sure that I end up, if you look on my site, I'll put this uh, expression here so you can copy and paste it. You don't have to type that in. So we'll do that. This is going to build. And we'll start out by validating um, We'll, end up, we'll validate, we can do both of these pretty easily. It's a pretty, pretty quick thing to do. So here's our contact controller. We 
don't have to validate when something is getting deleted, but when something, and again, we don't have to do it in the create with the get request or the edit in the get request. We just have to do it with the post. So I'm going to put a little um, condition here. And so what ends up happening, again, in terms, of, in terms of your model being validated, your model is validated based on the model binding. And, it, and if this is not something that out of the box you have control over. There's a model binding class that looks at... Uh, you know, all the values in a form, all the values in uh, on the URL, uh, even we'll do binding against cookie values. Um, and what it's going to do here is it's, um, uh, it's going to do its model binding. And if, it, if you pass in a, uh, an ID property that's a string for, a, um, uh, for something that's going to be a number, you know, it'll basically say this, it, it'll end up adding a, mo a model validation error for, for that property. So you could actually go and, and you know, take a look at the model state to see where the errors are and what the error messages are and that sort of thing. But the easiest thing to do is just to just say if model state is valid, and in fact we'll say do the opposite to make it a little bit easier. If it's not valid, we're just going to send back this view, right? We're basically saying, you know, we don't accept that form submission and we're going to send our model back. And I could do the exact same thing for the create, because we want to do the same thing. Again, we'll, we'll do some other custom model binding as well. And again, we're going to say if it's not valid, and again, we're going to have to pass our model back. So, you know, this is going to go to, let me spell return correctly. Okay, so we can build this. And if we go back here and click on contact and attempt to create, right, we'll get this is required. It'll go a step further. Tells us, tell us it's not a valid format. And we can control the, the, the fact that the first name is basically just looking at the property. We did this in class where we could create a display name for it. So it's, you know, first underscore name, not in that first space name, last space name, etc. But if you go in in here, Okay. That'll work, and it's taking me back to this page, right? That's fine. If I go to edit, right? Oh, you know what? I have an, I have an extra field here that I put into, you know, if I did that during one of the lessons, I think I did, where I was saying, showing you how you could just create these things pretty easily. So, um, let's see, contact, um, this must be an edit, or I have this extra input field, which I don't need, so I'm going to take that out. Again, just sort of showing you that you don't need to use these, you know, all these helpers. You have the ability to just create these fields if you want to, but it's a lot easier to use the helpers. So I went back here, reloaded this. Um, you know, again, now it's doing the validation on edit. Right? Okay, so... What I'm going to do is do a little bit, a uh, little bit more custom validation, um, and what I'm going to do is I wanted to add a, a property. Let's see if I actually have it here. I'm not sure if I put it in here. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to add a property that this is going to just something that not a property a method to my contact BUS just to make my life a little bit easier. And I'm going to overload get contact with a string. Just so I don't have to repeat this. And this is going to just, again, use my a lambda expression. And I'm, I'm going to even, you know, make sure the user doesn't give me white spaces and stuff like that by just saying, hey, look at the contacts email, trim it. So get any extra white space that might have uh, gotten in there. Get it in lowercase. If it's equal to the email that you passed in, right, we're going to do single or default. Again, I don't expect there to be more than one value. You know, our database should prevent, uh, when we have a database, should prevent it, and this should prevent this. We should have a logic in here that prevents multiple email addresses. Again, we're assuming we want the email address to, um, uh, to be unique with the 
users, you know, we might end up using it for a login or that sort of thing. So I'm going to build this, and I'm going to come back to the easiest one to start with is going to be the contact controller. Uh, contact controller, uh, the create. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little bit more logic here. So, so one of the things that you could do is you have the ability to add um, to add errors to the model state. Um, you know, I guess you could have multiple errors per the way that they go into the model state is they go in by key. So, in other words, if uh, someone tried to put in a string for your ID, right? I think I looked at this before, but if someone tried to put in a string for an ID, you could look at the model state. Um, and you could look at that key, and there's an errors collection, and you could get that error. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put this um, error in, but we're not going to put it in with a key. This means that it's not a property error, right? Um, because all property errors will be with keys. It's going to be considered a model error. We could turn it into a property er error and put it next to the email address and say the email address is invalid. But instead, we'll show you how we can get it to show up on the top in the uh, validation summary. So. This is a really, a really uh, easy thing to do. Is we're just going to say, hey, look, if contact bus, get contact with the email address that um, that you're trying to create, if it exists. Then what we're going to do is we're going to manually add an error to our model state. And the way that we do that is we're going to say model state add model error. And it's going to ask for a key, which would be like the property that you're that you're validating. And we're going to keep it empty, even though it's email, because we'll get it to show up on the top. I mean, we could test it out either way. And our exception is going to be And that's about it. So you know, this even if the model state was valid from the point of view of the contact, we're doing a little bit, a little bit more validation on it. And again, we could have put this in the contact class, but this makes it a little bit, a little bit easier to do. Let's uh, let's build this. Let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this email address, let's say. And I'm going to try to create a new person, and I'm going to use an existing email address. And that should have fired. Let's find out why it's not. Let me see if I have an extra space that's here. Or maybe I did something wrong. Let's test it. Uh, get contact by that email address. Let's just take a look in here. Let me try to build this. I think I did. I was pretty sure that I did. Let's try one more time. Yeah, one thing. I don't know why it's telling me that the email is not in valid format. That's a little weird. I think it might have a space. Okay, so email is not in the valid format. It should be showing up up here. I actually had tested this out. I'm not sure why it's not. Let me do a quick, a uh, couple of quick things here. Let's look at whether I wrote this correctly. Uh, trim to lower. You know what? I made a mistake here because the emails. I, what I needed to do was say email. Let me trim that too. Sorry about that. Let's build it. Come back to here. Grab you know, let me let me do it this way. Back to list, I'm gonna go to create. Now it tells me that the email is already in use. So it's a valid email address, but it's already being used. And again, if I change this. Right, that'll work, and that email address will work. So, you know, the, the problem is if I go to edit, it's not doing this check. So, if I went in here and took this email address and clicked on edit, right, now I have two 
uh, email addresses that are the same. So what, I'm, this is a, the second part of the validation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my uh, create action. So here's my create. And I'm sorry, my edit action. Let's take a look. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is a similar thing, but I'm going to say, hey, look, if, um, let's see, if contact the U.S., get contact by c.email, okay, two conditions now. If it's not equal to null, okay, and if I look at it, Okay. And I look at the ID, if it does exist, and the ID is not equal to this ID, that means not only does the email address, I mean, it could exist if it's this guy's email address, um, but what I'm doing here is basically saying, hey, look, if it exists and it's someone else, then I've got the same problem. So I'm going to say model state, add model error. Let me go up and just copy this from up here so it's consistent. So I'm going to save this, and if we go take a look at this, and I click on, uh, I'll grab this guy's email address, and I'll try to edit the first person with the same address. Let's see, you know what, I, that back list should actually go back to the same same page. Is it doing it? Let's make sure it's doing that. It should. We should be able to get, to get it to do that. If we click on edit, we go back. We're going back to A. What we could do on our edit page, just to do this really quickly, um, and again, there's other places we're going to run into the same thing. When we go, when we go back to list, um, in this case, it's going to work because it's an edit, and there's definitely going to be something in the first name. On the create, it's going to be a little bit trickier. We'd actually have to go and pass the value, but it's okay. At least it'll work in one spot. We'll go in here and say uh, new prefix equals model dot prefix. And that, that's one thing we haven't. I ran into once when I was testing something. It's not the worst thing to when we get this property. If last name happens to be either null or an empty string, you probably just want to return an empty string for the prefix, so you don't end up throwing you're not throwing exceptions all over the place. So, um, if we rerun this here, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to go edit this guy. Right, I'm on I, and I go back to the list, and I'm still on I, and let's see if this was a same one. Sorry, I'm losing my thread of thought here. All right, I'm just going to copy this. Now if I go back to edit this guy, try to put this in. All right, tells me it's already in use, but I can do this. All right, and now I'm going to have two email addresses, although something looks like it changed a little bit there, did it? Let's see, just make sure that worked. Something did not seem right. First name, last name. Hmm. It's also a little bit weird that right now the last name is coming up in lower K. No, it's not. It's I. I'm sorry. Okay, let's try this. Here's K. We go back here. Grab this email address of this second guy. Try to make the change to the first guy. And it gave me some space there. Let me save this. Something's a little bit off. Let's see.
Let's start with these two. Okay. We'll take this Zoa guy. Edit this top guy. Paste that in. Let's make sure that that. The other thing that I probably want to do is make this email, make this field a little bit longer. If I click on save, so emails in use. Let's make this Tuesdays. Right, so I was able to do that if I change the email address. I'm not sure what was going on before. Hopefully, there's not a not a bug that I introduced. And let me do uh, let me do one other thing here. Um, let's see. Well, let me actually say I'm going to save this video and I'm going to come back. And then the only thing that I want to do is I want to again make sure that you understand the concept of a partial view. Um, so what I would like to do would be to um, uh, pull out our the form from our edit and our create uh, uh, into a partial view because that's something that's going to become uh, we'll end up using a lot. All right, so I'll be back in a little bit.